Hey everyone, Cyclotronic Squirt Gun, coming at you with another comic book haul. This is all just one big haul I got for 75 cents each, um, due to a number of reasons. It was a total screw up. <laughs> yep, I had to pay additional shipping for this. They wrapped it in this thing. And they were upset that they used a uh, priority box and shipped it media mail. So yeah, here's a big tip. Don't ever do that. <laughs> oh my god, I, I never do this, but look what they did here. This is fucking... This is definitely uh, not a professional job, but this is what happens sometimes, you guys, when you get stuff for real cheap. I rebagged and board these. I still like them, but they're most of them are mid to lower range. Yep, more craziness. Look at this. They ship this media mail. Look at that. No protection. Okay. Yeah, this one was so screwed up that uh, I actually got over like $350 off of this even. So, yeah. But for $0.75 cents each, hey, man, it's all right. Yeah, but dude made up for it. You know, I had to pay that 12 something, but then he, I ended up getting like 15 something back. So, you know, dude wasn't that bad. Maybe he just didn't understand how to ship comics. So first we're going to start off with uh, 1983 uh, Alpha Flight number three, John Byrne. And this is the origin of the Master of the World which I remember as a kid, and I really, really love this. So let's just take a look. We got beautiful Snowbird, if that's her name, I can't remember. This is when John Byrne was still loving, you know, working really hard. He was a super hard worker, man. He would write and draw, and he's a legend for a reason. Let's see if I could get uh, some Master of the World. Yeah, Master of the World um, was some prehistoric person who stumbled upon a, a, a spaceship and got augmented. So when I collect all of these, I'm definitely reading Alpha Flight. This stuff came out of the uh, John Byrne, uh, Chris Claremont era. Um, pretty happy. I'm pretty happy I got that for 75 cents. That's a higher uh, grade, too. Okay, Alpha Flight 3, Alpha Flight 4, and 12. And one of the main characters dies in this. These are all like 1984. Um, yeah, Guardian dies. It's James uh, McDonald uh, Hudson, who was the leader. And he had something to do with uh, Wolverine getting his bones laced with antimanium and all that. So it's cool. It all ties together with the Wolverine with the mythos as well. So, yeah, like I said, that's about a mid-grade. I'm starting to care more about the grades. It's funny. At first I didn't, but now I'm starting to. A Flight 15, more John Byrne goodness. Look at that cover. Twenty, And I, I love that character. What's her name? Marina. I love that story with Submariner falling in love with her and all that stuff. That was great, great comic book event stuff. 25. I think he started getting other guys drawing and uh, inking, but yeah, that's the Alpha Flight. Ghost Rider number six. This is definitely lower grade. I, you know, but yeah, it's iconic. You got the Punisher symbol right there. I love it. A 50th issue. Pretty dang cool. This, as you guys who watch this know, I'm not really a 90s guy, but I, I appreciate a lot of this stuff. So let's do this. The, those it's a cutout right yeah and it's a super nice copy so i did okay there for 75 cents incredible hulk 283 sal buscema goodness covers okay these are these are kind of like 1983 1984 to 86 i remember as a kid loving that i wonder if it's bill Ill Bill, right? <laughs> 288. 
perfect copy except there's a little thing there. Don't like that. Okay, 1982, Iron Man, 156, first appearance of Mahler, uh, Dave Michelini wrote it, and uh, JRJR did the breakdowns, it's a cool cover, and the inside's okay, uh, 186, okay, 1990s Marvel Comics Presents, 54, I remember that one. I was still kind of in comics at that time. This is a nice copy. I wanted to show some of that Werewolf by Night art. So this is kind of why horror fans are horror fans because of comics. Because it's, um, I don't know, fear is rendered in, in the pages, interestingly, by some artists, you know. And I like I like it. But I'm not into horror, but I could definitely get into the comic book format of it, as long as it's not too gory. Yeah. Uh, New Mutants, 1984. First full, uh, first full appearance of the Dream Bear. I think I already have this in uh, direct edition, but this is a new stand. But, uh, Bill Sinkowitz. Sinkovich. Bill Sinkovich art. My brain, you guys. Some I, some days I'm like super sharp. Other days I'm in a fog. But I love Bill Sinkovich in his art from the 80s. The impressionistic style. I think it was a little controversial back then, you know. Now I think people collect it. The New Mutants, number 30. Another awesome Sinkovich cover. 31, 75 cents. This is all good. And uh, here's an Art Adams cover, 39. New Mutants. We getting freaking glare or what? Were we getting glare before, you guys? <laughs> do I need to do this? Silver Surfer, 56, on limb, art, so awesome, he was really good back then. Okay, Amazing Spider-Man, 331, Eric Larson, Wolverine, 21, and that's some John Byrne goodness. Archie Goodwin wrote it, Claus Jansen inked it, and not as in, this is 1990, I believe, so it's it's not as intense as the 80s stuff, but it still renders action, you know, Byrne and Jansen render action pretty well. X Factor 10. Louise Simonson uh, and her husband, uh, Walt Simonson, do this issue. I think Walt pulled her into the comic industry. I don't know if that's true. I just said that off the top of my head. Um, 1985. And we'll just... Uh, Walt Simonson has some really cool art. I've been, I'm reading his Thor. I don't know. I, I'm still in the Beta Ray Bill stuff and the early stuff, so... But it's not as great as I thought it would be. <laughs> like when you're reading the other, you know, great stuff like Cloak and Dagger, you know, Bill Mantlo and Rick Leonardi. That is so underrated. I love that one. So I'm going to keep going with the Thor, though. Here's 11. I collect X Factor. 35. These are all like late 80s. There's a cool Art Adams cover, 42. It's like 89 or something like that. 44. A lot of these are just mid-grade or lower. X-Force 3. Liefeld. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I 
just I think that he's definitely an example of the of the homogenized facial expressions of the nineties. It's like he he definitely brought that in. So number four, uh, X Force third appearance of Deadpool, which is pretty cool and it's a pretty decent copy too. X Force number five, see. <laughs> You know, come on, you guys. <laughs> That's, that is the 1990s of comics right there. Okay, and we're going to go into some Spidey goodness. You know, I love Spidey. I love the old stuff, though. You know, when the stories mattered. Captain Stacy, that mattered. It doesn't matter anymore. In fact, I guess the new Miss Marvel died in Spidey. That doesn't seem to matter. And, then, you know, John Romita, awesome. Re uh, rest in peace. And God bless that whole family and all their friends. Um, I, you know, I'm I'm too late saying this stuff, but I didn't want to jump on the band bandwagon. You know what I mean? But Ramina Senior, uh, Ramina Senior is the guy who made Spidey look great, like this, like like the classic Spidey. I I like the Ditko stuff. Don't get me wrong, I love Ditko, but anyway, I'd like to do this. I like to do the Hey, this is number 90 of Amazing Spider-Man. This is number 60 of Amazing Spider-Man. You know, so I'm going to do that with these right here. Uh, Marvel Tales 185. I think that's Ramita too. And of course it was 45. Marvel Tales uh, 117. You know, really it was issue 140. And uh, here's a Marvel Tales, but it actually uh, reprints a Marvel Team Up 65. So this is Marvel Tales 201, and it Marvel it reprints Marvel Team Up 65. And come to find out, that was a Claremont uh, Burn um, run, I guess. Um, before they did the their um, awesome X Men run, Dark Phoenix, and all that. They've worked on some Marvel team up and Power Fist. I mean Iron Fist. You know, Power Man. I screw up my words all the time, you guys. Iron Fist and uh and Marvel Team Up. They both worked on before X-Men. Spectacular Spider-Man 63. It's in a lower grade. This is one of the reasons why I went and did that eBay thing, you know, combined ship. But I still did pretty good, I think. Spider-Man 16. I think this is 19. 90. It's Todd McFarlane's very last Marvel issue. You know, there's some rumbling that Eric Larson's just as good back then. And I'm not even a, a Todd McFarlane fan, per se. But for some reason, in this Spider-Man run that he was just the writer of and the artist, I think it was good. I think it was even better than that Amazing Spider-Man stuff. But, you know, there's some rumbling that Eric Larson's just as good, and no disrespect to Eric, the mighty Eric Larson, but I still prefer Todd McFarlane a little more, and that sucks for him to hear. If he ever watched this video, he's like, fuck you. Because, <laughs> dude, I had to live through that. Okay, and the last one uh, is 1986's uh, Spider-Man Spider versus Wolverine. Boom! Very excited to get that for 75 cents. Um, I, unfortunately, the back side, the front looks great. Back along the spine has some issues, so I'm going to totally um, get a better copy of that. Anyway, you guys, but you haven't seen me in a while. <laughs> I don't know if that's too close or what. You haven't seen me in a while. This is what I look like, you know? Messy hair sometimes, but yeah. Thanks, YouTube friends. I appreciate you all, and... Um, I, I like that I'm getting to know you slowly. I don't jump into things right away, but I really love this type of interaction. I really like the comments. I really like the camaraderie. You know, it's virtual, right? But it's cool. I appreciate it. So anyway, I'll talk to you later.